Welcome streamers and YouTubers, this is Robert and yes, today's video is not about uh, a specific game, it's for content creators and it's about uh, game audio and streaming audio. Um, I love streaming games, I love playing games and I also love listening to music. Um, the problem is with uh, music and streaming, um, if you're listening to the game music, uh, eventually uh, it gets a bit old and you overhear it and the game music may be as awesome as anything but eventually you want to hear to your own music music that you like uh, but there are a couple of problems attached to that first of all um, music that you like is maybe not liked by everyone that watches your stream i for example like to listen to drum and bass but a lot of my all, uh, viewers they don't they want to listen to some other genre and uh, the more serious problem with uh, listening to music is um, copyrights. So it may happen to you that if you listen to music while you're streaming, that your stream gets muted either by Twitch or if you upload the highlight to YouTube, that you will get muted in YouTube. So I s searched for a way to um, work around this and I did. So in fact, if I bring this closer to the microphone, you should basically here that there's music and it's actually it's coming from whoop, it's coming from Winamp and I can listen to this music while I'm playing the game but it's not streamed so how did I do that today's video is about that so let me just go somewhere quiet and um, turn this on and also remove the overlays because we don't need it. Um, it looks very difficult, uh, but it's actually fairly simple. Once you have all the software and all the stuff installed and set this up, you just have to do it once and then this will work for you. Um, a lot of the stuff I talk about, um, I got from uh, a video tutorial from Mr. Time itself. Really, really awesome channel, Vi really, really awesome videos. Uh, learned a lot from, from him, so please check out his stuff if you're interested in uh, audio processing and uh, improving your stream uh, really good stuff there he also explains how you have to install all the software um, so i won't go into that i will just tell you what you need uh, and you will see it in the corner over there so the first thing you want to download is virtual audio cable cable a and cable b that's donationware, so you don't have to pay for it, but it's awesome if you um, support those guys. I, uh, I um, threw a couple of dollars to them because their solution basically made this possible. Uh, from the same company, you want to download a voice meter. Um, then you want to download VST host. You want to download some Reaper plugins. And uh, that's everything. You, you just get all the stuff. Everything is free. Cable is donation where you install all the stuff, how to install it. You find it on uh, YouTube and you just Google it and all it says on the page. And then it's about uh, setting it up and uh, how to set it up. I will explain briefly now. So the first thing you want to do uh, is we want to change in Windows the default uh, playback device. The default playback device in Windows is usually your speakers or it's uh, your headphones if you have a headset uh, connected. Now we are changing that. We are changing that to cable A, the cable A input. This is what basically this does. When you're doing this, you won't hear anything anymore. So don't be surprised that all your sounds are gone. gone. They are not. They are just routed into this particular input. Um, for some games, um, if the games don't have a default uh, out, you maybe have to set it uh, uh, separately. In this game, for example, there's no default option, so I, I directly set it to cable A. Um, and uh, for TeamSpeak, uh, there's basically two options. Uh, you can either one is good, you can directly route it to cable A, or you can just use the Windows default. And um, this will make it so that every desktop device that has a, a def that, that, that sends sounds will go here. So now we want to separate Winamp from that. Winamp usually also goes to the desktop out, uh, but Winamp uh, has 
um, the option to change that. That's why I chose Winamp over uh, any other music replaying software shenanigans. And there you want to go to options, preferences, and then you have a, a long list of options and you want to search for plugins, output, and then select the Nullsoft Wave Out output. That's the default plugin that's there. You double click it and there you set the device to voice meter input. And that's this little body over here. And then the last thing you want to do uh, is the microphone. For the microphone, you need a VST host. And in VST host, uh, if you start that, you have your uh, plugin sets and um, this, this can be saved. So whenever you start VST host, this is everything there. But one thing you have to do every time when you start this, you have to go to uh, devices, wave, and there you set your microphone input and route it to the cable B input. Uh, that's what it says there. And also very important, sample rate should be the same as your system sample rate. I'm using 44, uh, 100 throughout the whole system. That's just fine. And the buffer size, um, you have to play around with this a little bit. Uh, basically, uh, you want to check if the audio from your microphone is in sync with the video from your webcam. And you do this by adjusting the buffer size here and in your streaming program. In uh, my case, that's uh, OBS, as I mentioned it you have the mic sync um, delay in the audio settings. And those two values, you have to play around with this a little bit and uh, eventually you will find that the settings that work for me are 2100 samples in VST host and minus 200 milliseconds in OBS. Okay, so um, that set this up. And now we have all our sound sources routed to different cable or voice meter inputs, we still don't hear anything. We just made sure that the sounds arrive at the correct locations. So now how do we route the stuff? Well, that's actually the, the, the more easier part. The, the hardest part is basically done. Let's start with OBS. Uh, in OBS, um, you go to your settings, you have an audio tab, and there you choose as your desktop audio device, cable A, that's what we have here. So it receives audio from game browsers TeamSpeak and we want to send that to the stream. So that's what we have here. Cable A is the desktop audio, and then cable B will be our microphone. So that's this line over there. And that's all you have to do. Again, together with checking out the uh, sync stuff over here. Um, then in order to hear something, that's what voice meter is for. Uh, voice meter, that's uh, this small software over here. Um, and uh, it has two hardware inputs, a virtual input and two outputs, uh, uh, a main out and a, uh, a virtual out. Uh, you don't need a virtual out, you just set the main out to be your, your speakers, basically. And um, then you bring in your desktop audio on one of the hardware inputs. I have it on hardware input two. And then here you say that you want to have your hardware input routed to your main out together with the virtual input. The virtual input is um, a Winamp. So if I play this again, then uh, you won't hear anything, of course, but uh, you see that um, this is basically the music. Whenever I turn the music on, this is on this virtual device. And, and because it's a virtual device, it is not routed to the desktop audio and it's not audible in the stream. But here I can route it to the speakers. And uh, that's what I'm doing with this. Um, I also have as a as a preview function basically routed my microphone in here, but that's not active. I just uh, turn it on to listen if, uh, if there are any noises or something. But that's you can't completely ignore the, the first one. Okay, let's pause the music again. So that's voice meter. And then the last thing you want to do in Teamspeak, um, basically there it's the same. You uh, if you want that uh, your buddies that you're talking with should be uh, audible for the stream. You set the output to cable A again, and your input is the microphone that's cable B. And this is a really cool thing because this allows you to easily switch TeamSpeak uh, to a private mode, so to say. If uh, someone has to say something that the audience shouldn't hear, you just uh, set the replay device of TeamSpeak from cable A to voice meter. 
What this does is basically this. TeamSpeak will be removed from streaming, but it will go to your speakers. So you will still be able to listen to your buddies, but the stream won't. So you don't have to stop the stream. You don't have to mess anything around. You just have to change one setting in TeamSpeak. That's really awesome. Um, so that's that's basically the setup. I hope uh, that's clear. One final word on why I'm using VST host and not just route the microphone directly to cable B. Um, that's basically all explained in uh, Mr. Time itself's video. It, it just makes for a better um, a microphone audio. If I if I disable all the plugins that I have here, then uh, this is what my room sounds like. It's pretty awful, right? And I have like bumpy stuff, and it's noisy, and it's also if I <laughs> if I yell, then the microphone clips. That's that's not nice. And I'm basically using all those effects and um, small little plugins to. First of all, make the noise go away. So I have a uh, I have a gate and I have a, a noise removal and I have a compressor. So if I'm talking loud, uh, the loud noise gets reduced, and if I talk quietly, uh, it gets bumped up a little bit. And um, and finally, I have I'm using an, an equalizer User for two reasons. Oh, hi! I'm recording video. What am I? Mute my voice to speak. Hey, mach nix. Ich pass. Danke. User left your channel. Awesome demonstration there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm using the equalizer basically for two things. The first thing is I remove uh, bumps. So if I bang on the table, you still hear it, but it's not so bass intensive. And the second thing is basically the keyboards. That's what the notch filter is for here in the end. Uh, there's an uh, there's a, uh, a band pass um, at um, three kilohertz. This is where the most annoying clicking sounds of my keyboard is coming from and it, re it reduces it a little bit. So um, yeah, just those minor things to make audio a little bit better. That's about it. Uh, I hope I could um, give you guys a little bit of inspiration. Uh, if you are using something similar, I would be really keen to know what your solution to this problem was. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, anything, just leave them in the comments below. And I wish you a very nice day. Bye.